Welcome to Behold the Real Jesus Broadcast, brought to you by the Jesus Only Broadcast and Network, located at jobn.tv, where you can go and see and hear the preaching of the Apostles' Doctrine of Christ, the Jesus Only Doctrine. If you've been tuning in this week, you'll know that we've been talking about the government of God that rested upon Jesus' shoulder. You see in Isaiah 9 5, this battle is with confused noise. Now, the battle is good against evil, the church of the living God, against the world. If you are the world, the world would love you, but because you're not of the world, the world hated you. They hated Jesus without a cause. They're going to hate you without a cause if you're in the true Christ. Jesus said this battle is with confused noise. Confusion, Babylon, many different ideas, different doctrines, and confusion. But there's only one real Jesus, one God, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God's Father of all, above all, and in us all. There is uh, the Jesus-only doctrine, the Holy One of God, mentioned 53 times in the Word of God that He's the Holy One. The Holy Trinity is not mentioned one time in the Word of God because there is no Holy Trinity. We'll get into the broadcast today about the judgment in Isaiah 9, 5. Jesus said, uh, this battle is with confused noise. And uh, unto us a, a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government, and that government is what we're talking about today. The government shall rest upon his shoulder. The only thing that rests upon Jesus' shoulder was the cross. Not shoulders, not plural, but shoulder, the cross of Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is a gospel that we must suffer with him. All that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And that's the reason Jesus said, if any man come after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross, and come and follow me. Any man that seeks to save his life is going to lose it. Any man that loses his life for the gospel's sake, the same shall find it. You're not only called to believe on Jesus, but also to suffer for his name's sake. Now, I know that that does not go well in a prosperity church because in the world today that it is now a crossless Christianity. But neighbor, there is a cross there regardless if we like it or not. And if we do not apply it, and the words that Jesus said in obedience, crucifying the flesh with the affections and the lust, we will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. His name shall be called Wonderful Counsel of the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace, you'll know this doctrine, that's doctrine of Christ. When we get into this government of God, that it is a cross, it is uh, sufferings. We're not only believed to, to believe on Jesus, but also to suffer with him. The captive of our salvation was made perfect through sufferings. Take a look at Matthew 24. Jesus said, take heed that no man deceive you. Many will come out of my name saying, I'm Christ. And going to deceive many. What? Through signs, miracles, and lying wonders. You're going to hear of wars, rumors of war, seeds. You've been out of trouble. All these things come to pass, but the end is not yet. Nations going to rise against nation. That is, the nations of this world. In, in Genesis uh, 10, we have the table of the nations and the word of God, which is 70. Uh, kingdom against kingdom. That's not redundant. It's a kingdom of darkness against against the kingdom of God. There shall be famines, pestilence, earthquakes, and diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Why are we going through sufferings? Because the sorrows is the birth pangs to bring forth Christ in you. Do you see? He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastor teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, and for... So as we all come into the unity of the faith unto the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, growing up into him in all things. What is that all things? The Holy Ghost will lead us and guide us into all truth. Faith is the substance of things. 
and all things in him. These are the beginning of sorrows. Why? Sorrows because if we're partaker of the sufferings of Jesus, we will also be take, partaker of uh, the consolation. They're going to deliver you up to be afflicted. Who? The world. Those that are in the world. All the world, the nations will hate you, and you'll be delivered up and uh, to be afflicted and shall kill you. You shall be hated of all nations. For my name's sake, the true Jesus only. Not God Jr., not a second person of the Godhead or some uh, Trinity doctrine, but the Jesus only doctrine that is now going through the world and literally uh, overturning nations right now in one of the greatest moves of God that we've seen here uh, in this century. Many shall be offended. They're going to betray one another. They're going to hate one another. False prophets are going to rise. They're going to deceive many. How many false prophets? Many false prophets. They'll get up and prophesy for money, for gain, and many have erred thinking that gain is godliness from such turn away. Those that will, will be rich fall into divers temptations and many hurtful lusts. But many, literally, denominations, churches, or whatever, preaching uh, that Gain is godliness. Uh, no, it's not. We cannot set our heart upon uh, the things. Though riches increase, we do not set our heart upon them. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of me is going to wax cold. But he that sure it shall endure unto the end. The endure, endure what? Persecution, tribulation, hated of all nations for the name's sake. What? It requires enduring hardship as a good soldier. For this gospel of the kingdom, there's only one gospel. There's not 15 different ways to go to heaven or 100 different ways, not three different ways. There's only one way, one truth, one life, and that is Jesus only. He is the only true God and eternal life. He is the blessed and only potentate, 1 Timothy 6.15. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end, uh, the end of this age will come. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, Spoken of by Daniel the prophet. That's a transgression of desolation. That literally the abomination that make it desolate set up in the sanctuary shall be 1,290 days. Well, the trend, why? Because of transgression. Daniel 8. It's the transgression of desolation. Because we have sinned, uh, these things will come up on us. In other words, uh, God will use the rod and the staff, not the wheel of his cart, not his wrath, but his rod and his staff to perfect his body that in the last days uh, that we will understand it perfectly. Is this not sealed up among my treasures to be revealed in the last days, saith God? For the Lord will judge his people and repent himself of the evil when he sees their powers gone. In other words, we're coming to the end of our flesh and there's none shut up or left. Well, this is what he's talking about. And this abomination of desolation stand in the holy place. What is that? Well, the devil's not on the back pew. He's not on the front pew. He's behind the pulpit standing in the oracle of God. That is, and that temple of God is not a uh, heron. It is a naos. Yeah, literally there, a seat in Pergamos where Satan's seat is, Revelation 2, uh, where Satan dwelleth. We are seated together in heavenly places in Christ, but we have to be in the true Christ. Then he says here, as we go further on into the word, in 1 John, how do we know what is truth? How do you know what is the truth? There's so many voices in the land, so many doctrines of dogmas and, and catechisms and chisms in the body, and everyone saying that they have the truth. It says now, John, 1 John 4, verse 1 in his epistle, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits to see whether they are of God. Why? Because many false prophets are gone into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. How do we know? Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. What is that? Well, that's the Father. Jesus Christ is the Father. Somebody said, well, how do we have that? Well, it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. They said they're going to deliver you before kings and magistrates. They're going to deliver you up to be afflicted. You're going to be delivered up before kings and magistrates. Take you no thought what you shall say or speak, for I will give you a mouth that they cannot gainsay nor resist. 
For it's not you that speaketh, but the Spirit of your Father. Well, what's that? That's the Spirit of Christ. That's the Spirit of Jesus, the Spirit of the Son. Galatians 4, 6, God has sent forth the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Why? Because the Spirit of the Son and the Spirit of the Father is one and the same. We find that in 1 John 2, 20, you have an unction from the Holy One. Not a Holy Trinity, not a Holy Tunis or Binitarianism, or even a God-man. A Holy One, a Jesus-only doctrine, a blessed and only potentate, 1 Timothy 6, 15. King of kings, Lord of lords, who only hath immortality, dwelling light which no man can approach unto, nor see, nor can see. Jesus said, him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. That's a seat. Four and twenty seats in heaven. There's your priesthood. Well, Satan's seat is in Pergamos, where Satan dwelleth, among the church, where it ought not, where it is an oracle of God. In the naos, in that spiritual temple, which Jesus said, destroy this temple in three days, I'll raise it up. Well, he spake of the temple of his body. He used to use the Greek word naos. The Jews said, well, 40 and six years were this temple in building. This temple they used was Hieron, a physical brick and mortar temple. But Jesus spake of the temple of his body. That temple is naos. The same there in 2 Thessalonians 2, that that uh, Antichrist, that, that old son of perdition, the devil, uh, that opposeth all that is God or that is, that is worship, that setteth in the temple of God. That's Naos, not Hieron. It is the spiritual temple of God. Where is Satan's seat? Pergamos, the church of the living God. It's standing where it ought not. Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. This is what Jesus warned in the last days. And he said, any, take a look over here. At any spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, if it doesn't confess that, it's not of God, it's the spirit of Antichrist. Well, what is that spirit? First John 2, 20, who is a liar, but he denied that Jesus is the Christ. He's Antichrist. You have an unction from the Holy One. You know all things, and you know the truth, no lies of the truth. First John 2, 22. Who's, who is a liar, but he that denied that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that has denied both the Father and the Son. Why? Because the Son is the Spirit of God. The Father is the Spirit of God. Somebody said, well, the Son of God was in the days of his flesh. Yes, Jesus, who was in the form of God's Spirit, made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant made in the likeness of men in order to redeem us under the law. God sent forth his Son made of a woman made in under the law. Galatians 4 verse 4. Well, who was that? Jesus said, you've seen me, you've seen the Father. The words that I speak are not mine, the Father dwelling in me. He's the one doing the works. So every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ, the Father, glory, the Son, the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, is come in the flesh. Not has come, is come. That is a present imperfect tense. Means that Jesus Christ is still coming in the flesh. We are the body of the Christ. He's still coming. God manifests in the flesh. And that spirit as the church of the living God, Christ in you, the hope of glory. There, any spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ, that he is the God of glory, that he is the everlasting Father, that he is uh, that Son, uh, that Spirit of the Son, that God has sent forth uh, the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Jesus Christ, 1 John 5, 20. Uh, Jesus Christ has come and give us an understanding of him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. That Son is the Father. It's one and the same. This is a true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. 1 John 5, 20. Any spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God and is that spirit of Antichrist. Where have you heard that it should come? And now, even already, is in the world. Now, what is that spirit of Antichrist? Take a look at first, why, why is this happening? Well, 1 Peter 1.10, who is this Jesus Christ? Of which salvation? 1, John, 1 Peter 1.10, which salvation the prophets have inquired, searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, Watch it here, searching what or what manner of time, the Spirit of Christ. Christ is that Spirit. That rock was Christ. Before Abraham was, I am. That's Christ. 
Jesus stated that he was before Abraham, where Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it. The Spirit of Christ and those Old Testament prophets, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ. This is the Spirit of Christ, Jesus in the form of God, there, thought it all right to be of God, but made himself of no reputation, come under his own law as a man. And that man is not Christ Jr., it's Christ. Christ is Christ. The man Christ Jesus is the Father of glory. That is, uh, that First John 2, 20, you have an unction from the Holy One, not a Holy Trinity, and you know all things. I've not written you because you know that's true, because you know it, and no lies of the truth. Look at 1 John 2, 22. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. What? That he is the Spirit of God, that made himself of no reputation, came to the world as a man, went back to his former glory, and now Christ is in you, the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit in you is the Holy Ghost, Christ in you, the hope of glory. He is the Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. Well, how could that be? Because Jesus is the Christ, which is the Father and the Son. When you have the revelation of Christ, you have the revelation of the Father, that he, the Father, is that spirit. What's the Son? The Son is that spirit. Galatians 4, 6, God has sent forth the spirit of his Son. And the hearts where we cry, have a Father. They're one and the same spirit of God. So we're saying that we have drifted so far away from the truth in the world that we do not know the revelation of Christ. Very, very seldom do you find a morsel of truth in the revelation of Christ. But God is restoring that back to those of a pure heart. Who's a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ, that he is the Spirit of God, that he is the Father of glory, that he is the Word, he is the Holy Ghost. He's Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son... The same hath not the Father. Why? Because the Son is the Father revealed in the days of his flesh and is now in you if you have Christ in you. But he that acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Why? Because the Son is the Father revealed. He is the image of the invisible God. He's the expressed image of his singular person. That therefore, that bide in you which you've heard from the beginning. Take a look at Revelation 16, 13. It says here, that uh, the unclean spirits, there are three. Here's your trinity. It's in the Word of God. Now, we don't want to make you mad, sad, or glad. It's just simply in the Word of God. It says in Revelation 16, 13, that I saw, John saw, had a revelation and understood three unclean spirits. Anytime you divide the Spirit of God, then you don't give the Son of God the glory of the Father. He is the Lord to the glory of the Father. Then we get into trouble. These three unclean spirits are like frogs come out of the mouth. That's what's being preached of the dragon, mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. This mouth is the oracle. That oracle is a, that, that literal desolation, the abomination of desolation, standing in the holy place, in the oracle of God, where it ought not. Well, that is uh, the mouth. There's the oracle. It's the mouth of the dragon, the mouth of the beast, and the mouth of the false prophet. The dragon gives him his seat and great authority. That's not the seat in heaven where we're seated, but it's the seat there in the church in Pergamos where Satan's seat is, where Satan dwelleth, literally in the church. Who are these? These are spirits of devils working miracles. Somebody said, well, I saw a miracle. Big deal. I don't care if angel dust flies all over the place, sparks fly everywhere, and you raise the dead before breakfast every morning. If they do not speak this one God, Jesus only doctrine, it is because there's no truth in them. They will work miracles in the last days, signs, miracles, and lying wonders that if it were possible, it would deceive the very elect. Who's sending that? 
God is sending strong delusion that they had pleasure and unrighteousness uh, because of that, that they all might be damned who received not the love of the truth. Now, neighbor, it's very serious. We realize that. That's the reason we're going to speak uh, the truth. Those that hear will, and those that don't will go their own ways. These are the spirits of devils working miracles. They go forth into the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them, and it culminates in the great day of God Almighty Armageddon, the gate of gathering of all nations in the plains of Megiddo. This is a trinity. Frogs, there's your mouth, there's the oracle where it's ought not. Jesus, as Jesus said in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place where it ought not. It's an oracle there, and uh, this is a reason why. They said, uh, Paul talking to 2 Thessalonians 2, talking about the coming of our Lord Jesus, and by our gathering together unto him, the rapture, if you will, the rapizo. Be not soon shaken of mind to be troubled in our spirit, word, letter from us, at that the day of Christ is at hand. That's the day of God Almighty, the day of the Lord. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day now shall not come until it come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. First Timothy 4, verse 1, said, The Spirit speaketh expressly, then of the latter day some shall depart from the faith. Given heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, having a conscience here with a hot arm, forbidden to marry, and abstaining from meats which God has sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Who is this? Who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped, so that he as God setteth in the temple? That is not a physical temple on the mount, on the mount there uh, in Jerusalem, uh, the mosque of Omar that has to be torn down. That uh, temple is not Hiaron, it is Naos. Uh, that is uh, the spiritual temple of God. That is Pergamos and Revelation 2, where Satan's seat is, where Satan dwelleth. There is in that oracle, setteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. This is the strongest delusion this world will ever see. Paul said, remember you not that when I was with you, I told you these things. What things? Either the things of faith. Faith is substance of things hope for. The revelation of Jesus Christ is showing his servants things which must shortly come to pass. He sent and signified it by his angel unto John. What is that? Revelation 1.8. That Jesus said, I am Alpha and Omega, which is, was, and is to come. Uh, uh, the ending and the beginning, the Almighty. He is the Almighty God. There's not another. There's no God Jr. It is him. He said, now you know what holdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Because iniquity is abounding, the love of many will wax cold. This is everybody will call evil good and good evil. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. That's not the Holy Ghost. That is the governments there of men. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Notice that's a capital W. He says, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Watch what? Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with what? All power, signs, and lying wonders. Now, this signs, uh, miracles, and lying wonders will be so strong that if it were possible, it would deceive the very elect. Those that seeketh for a sign, Jesus said, a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. Be settled in the Lord, seek ye him while we can, work while it's day, for the night cometh which no man can work. Yet those that seek God out of a pure heart will find him, Jesus Christ, the only true God, the blessed and only potentate, that he is the only Lord, there is not another, and uh, that this with God himself then will, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Why? Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Who's sending this delusion? God will send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned. Somebody said, but that's not just believe in Jesus. It'll all work out. No, they're coming in my name, Jesus said, and shall deceive many. Using the name of Jesus, and they are standing in a place, in a holy place where it ought not. They who believe not the truth, they might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Who's the truth? Jesus is the truth. He's the way. He is the truth. 
What is that truth? It's Jesus Christ and Him only. They believe not the truth. What? That Jesus only is God. And then we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brother, and beloved the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of what? The truth. What's the truth? Jesus is that Spirit. We find over here, uh, John 16, he said, I'll tell you the truth. It's expedient I go away. If I go not away, the comforter will not come. We're going to find what is he saying here. Uh, come down for the sake of time. A couple of minutes left. He says, they, uh, in uh, 24, uh, 16, 25, these things I have spoken to you in Proverbs. But the time cometh, well, I'm almost speaking in Proverbs, but I'll show you plainly of the Father. Why would Jesus speak in Proverbs? Because in Colossians uh, uh, 2, verse 1 through 9, we find that there's a mystery. There's a mystery of God and the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid all treasures, wisdom, and knowledge. Why would God hide it? Because only the pure in heart will see God. What is the bottom line of that, Colossians 2, 9? For in him, Jesus, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, one body. Not two, not three, one. And he said, at that day you shall ask in my name. I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. Why? Because Jesus is the Father, set down with the Father in his throne. Revelation 3.21. And these, they said, what is righteousness? He said, the Father loveth you because you've loved me and believe I came out from God. What came out from God? The Word. The Word was made flesh. He came into the world came forth from the Father, came into the world, and left the world and went back to the Father, John 17, 5, glorified with the Father's own self. If you'd like to know more on this government of God, the work coming on the last days, mention offer DBM number 80, a gift of $10 or more, and we'll get it out to you. Again, the government, the government of Jesus Christ, DBM offer number 80, we'll get it out to you there as fast as possible. Until the next time, this is Brother Dennis Beard saying, Behold the real Jesus. Well, praise God, neighbor. In the last days, the Lord God himself, Jesus Christ, will send strong delusion upon all those uh, because they received not the love of the truth and might be saved, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. We're making an offer to you for this month called The Great Deception. The key Z stigma, the 603 score and six, and the revealing of that beast, the number of the beast, the number of a man. For a gift of $15 or more, just mention DBM, offer number 60, and we'll get the book, The Great Deception. 603 score and six out to you. The mark of the beast, the number of a man, 603 score and six, the key Z stigma, out to you. I know that'll be a blessing to you. Well, until the next time, this is Brother Dennis Beard saying, Behold the real Jesus.